Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 13th of February. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can do that anytime by calling 1-800-472-0391. Find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska. And if you haven't tried this recently, pull up your smartphone or your tablet and type in mobile, M-O-B-I-L-E dot weather dot gov. And a mobile friendly website will come up. You can bookmark that or Here's what I like to do, save it to your home screen and it acts just like a, a phone application or an app. Uh, that way it's pretty light, it doesn't take up a whole lot of bandwidth, so if you're in a place that doesn't really get that good a service, try that out and punch in your zip code and uh, well, you'll be uh, ready to go. And then you can save that forecast to your home screen and just start right there every time. It's a really easy way to get the weather service forecast information where you are in your part of Alaska. If that's not working for you, you have any other questions about what we do with our forecast, with the show, uh, whatever you need, weather-wise, happy to help. But just email me, david.snyder at noaa.gov. And, uh, and thanks for everybody that does email. It's nice to hear from you no matter what part of Alaska you're watching from tonight. Let's take a look at what's going on. Most of the hazardous weather tonight is really going to be in the interior. Winter weather advisories are posted for all the regions here, shaded in yellow, uh, including around the Norton Sound and out across the Yukon Delta and the lower Yukon Valley and the middle Tanana Valley and the upper Tanana Valley. Most of these regions here in the east are looking at uh, about four to seven inches of snow. Uh, for you folks in Fairbanks tonight especially, it uh, looks like the snow will probably taper off a little bit through the remainder of the afternoon and early evening, but then come back especially after midnight. So just because it stops where you are doesn't mean it's done entirely. There will be more snow for you tomorrow. Most of these regions are looking at uh, uh, winter weather advisories that will continue at least until uh, the afternoon tomorrow. So uh, plan on more snow in the middle and upper Tanana Valley, the Yukon Flats, down toward the Deltana, Tanana Flats region, out toward Bettles as well. Now, as we get back toward the west, winter storm warnings are in effect for many along and generally north of a line from uh, Galena all the way up toward Ambler and uh, into the Kobuk and Noatak Valley regions there. Those winter storm warnings will go uh, until about uh, 6 p.m. on Wednesday or so. Some of these will end a little bit earlier in the afternoon. But as you get out toward the west, we're talking about blizzard warnings there. And for St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait communities, that could mean winds up to 65 miles per hour for you. Those blizzard warnings are expected to bring uh, some pretty hefty wind there. And as a result, uh, the uh, blowing and drifting snow and certainly whiteout conditions may be possible in those regions. So plan on that. A little bit uh, further east into the Seward Peninsula itself and the Selawik Valley, uh, probably talking more about 40 mile an hour winds there, but still three to five inches of snow. And uh, again, a, a decent amount of uh, wind coming through there with that. So uh, plan on that and uh, plan on some uh, pretty poor travel conditions in the meantime. Uh, once again, uh, winter weather advisories out toward Norton Sound and the Yukon uh, Delta as well as the lower Yukon Valley. Uh, those regions about three to five inches of snow as much as seven possible there and uh, four to seven inches as we were saying across the central and eastern parts of the interior. Here is the weather pattern as we see it today from satellite picture. You can see a deep south and westerly flow coming in across the central and eastern chain, the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, and into the western part of Alaska itself. The deep area of low pressure is seen in the spiraling location you see just east of the Kamchatka Peninsula. Meanwhile, drier conditions across the central and eastern Gulf. Colder flow still coming in off the Arctic Ocean from the north and west, and as that uh, pushes east and south, that's keeping things pretty dry and tame across parts of southeast. A uh, winter storm warning was posted earlier across some southern sections of the Panhandle. That has been allowed to expire now as uh, weather conditions are improving there. So we're watching this next round and several waves of it as snow continues to work in from the west and southwest and colder air coming in behind that. At the surface, it looks like this. Colder air is poised and ready to drop southward, but combating that is that strong west and southwest flow coming in across the west coast. And that's the snow that we see passing through the region right now. Some areas of rain around Unalaska and Dutch Harbor, also across the central and eastern parts of the Panhandle. Some light snow across Eagle down toward Northway. And then some spotty snow showers being reported out at Shemya. As we get into tonight, snow will be a little bit more widespread. And snow and blowing snow with blizzard conditions expected around the Bering Strait communities and into Kotzebue Sound and the Seward Peninsula. Now as we get into the central and eastern interior, uh, that'll just be kind of garden variety snow. 
but snow nonetheless in about four to seven inches as we go through the daytime tomorrow. Uh, for Wednesday in southeast, uh, generally a uh, cloud cover in the north, a little drier conditions down in the south with a trough of low pressure lying right along the outer coast. Some pockets of rainfall further south of Kodiak, but high pressure is trying to develop across west and southwestern Alaska, and that'll start to break up some of the snow into more of a snow shower type of a setup. A trough of low pressure is crossing from west to east slowly. That'll keep the winds moving across the Beaufort Sea coast and keep a pretty tight pressure gradient here across the Bering Strait. So once again, those winds in the region could be upwards of 40 to even 65 miles per hour uh, blowing and drifting that snow around. South of the chain, we've got a 993 low there just south of Adak. That's going to keep southerly winds blustery across the central chain as we go through your Wednesday. By Thursday, that wave across the interior has pushed eastward. High pressure sets up in its place. That'll break up some of the cloud cover across the middle and lower Yukon Valley. Uh, rain and snow showers may be a little more likely across parts of the Panhandle and the northern and even the western Gulf Coast, including Kodiak Island. And then out across the west itself, pockets of rain and snow will be found around the lower and middle Yukon Valley, stretching into uh, the middle Yukon Valley perhaps by the end of the day. But the core of low pressure is deepening across the northern part of the uh, Bering Sea as well. 989 millibars we're expecting to see the winds pick up from the south and of course this is going to start breaking up more of the ice across some parts of the uh, the northern Bering Sea. We'll see a lot of changes I think down here across south and west more of a northern progression of that ice edge when we get into the marine forecast here in just a little bit so uh, keep your eye on that. Look for snow showers across the southern Bering. Some of that will wrap into the Pribilovs as we get into Thursday and there's another system right behind it that'll be crossing in from uh, the North Pacific. Uh, that, again, bringing up the winds for the western part of the chain as we get into your Thursday. And rain is uh, certainly spreading eastward into uh, Haida Gwaii and parts of the central and southern panhandle as we get into your Thursday. So back to an active pattern here, not just the cold and dry that we've been sitting on top of for a while. And uh, again, the interior seems to really be uh, taking the brunt of this one as we go into the next uh, 24 hours there. Here's a look at the morning forecast for temperatures, uh, 20s and 30s for many parts of southeast. In fact, uh, a little bit below freezing thanks to the drier weather for you. Across the, uh, the interior along the Alcan border, anywhere from 5 to about 10 below. Fort Yukon coming up remarkably thanks to the wetter air, 11 below, and cloud cover does the trick as well. Uh, anywhere from 10 to about 20 below for the north slope. From Barrow at 11 below to Kaktovik around 18 below, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse about 15 below. Once you get down to Fairbanks, temps are on the plus side of zero once again, around uh, 13 degrees or so. Uh, Kotzebue Sound temperatures in the lower 20s. Norton Sound anywhere from about 25 and known to 30 in Unilakleep. Just shy of 30 around Bethel and most areas around Bristol Bay also looking at temperatures in the upper 20s. 35 around St. Paul and temps generally above freezing for the Alaska Peninsula. Cold Bay, Falls Pass, King Cove all on the warmer side of that. 33 degrees for Unalaska and Dutch Harbor and about the same for Shemya. As we take a look at tomorrow afternoon, Notice temperatures in southeast are back above freezing again, mid to upper 30s to about 40 degrees or so along the outer coast. Ketchikan and Annette out towards Sitka will be some of your warmest uh, places as well. Craig and Kowak probably included in that. Around Prince William Sound, Valdez and Whittier and uh, also Cordova, you're looking at temps in the mid to upper 30s. Tomorrow afternoon, Cook Inlet temperatures, including Kenai, likely in the upper 20s. Uh, Kodiak running around 40 degrees by the afternoon on Wednesday, mid-20s for the middle Tanana Valley, again with snow falling in the region, and lower to mid-teens for uh, Eagle and Northway. Five above for Fort Yukon, four below though in Kaktovik. Again, you're on that colder northwesterly flow. And as you get into the North Slope, you're still talking about teens and 20s there. Kotzebue Sound temperatures back in the 20s and 30s. No, I'm expecting to see a high around 29 degrees tomorrow. Uh, places around the eastern Norton Sound region, including uh, uh, Unilakleet and out toward Galena. Still in the lower 30s there, Kobuk and Noatak Valley in the 20s and 30s as well. Lower 30s as you head out toward the southwest coast. Nunavak Island and St. Lawrence Island uh, in the lower 30s. Now as we get into Thursday morning, look for temperatures to remain on the cooler side there. Still on the drier edge, you'll expect to see temps be between about 5 to 10 below from Fort Yukon to Arctic Village. 20s and low 30s for southeast, low to mid 20s for most of south central. Kodiak 29 degrees, 22 in Nunavak Island. McGrath, you're looking at about 12. Uh, Ambler, about 12 degrees there, and uh, well, 16 or so for Kotzebue with uh, Cold Bay and Falls Pass both in the mid 30s. High temperatures on Thursday in the 30s and 40s for southeast, mid to upper 30s for south central, closer to 40 in Kodiak. Same goes for the Alaska Peninsula. The chain in the mid-30s, uh, mid-20s there for the southwest coast, a little bit warmer to Bristol Bay. 
Uh, the interior, looking at teens and 20s there. The North Soap, single digits to low teens around Barrow at 13, Wainwright 16, and Nome. You're expecting a high around 26 degrees for your Thursday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Time for your aviation weather and flying weather is where we start with IFR conditions spreading through the interior all the way into the upper Tanana Valley and all the way out toward the YK Delta and northward into the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys as the next wave of weather is still working north and east across the Bering Sea. Uh, spared for now would be southeast with VFR conditions all the way through the Chilkoot and White Pass region. You'll see increasing areas of MVFR out over the open waters of the Gulf and then spreading across more of the interior. As IFR conditions begin to wane away a little bit more on Wednesday afternoon, you'll see them spreading into Point Barrow down toward Atkasuk. And still looking at VFR conditions by the end of the afternoon for parts of Kaktovik and uh, the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. Also the Aleutian Chain looking at increasing areas of MVFR. That will linger through Thursday morning with IFR returning for the YK Delta, uh, parts of uh, Bethel perhaps and into the lower Kuskokwim might be okay uh, without IFR in the morning, but MVFR will be in place. Up the Yukon Valley we go and you see IFR conditions there. MVFR is spreading into northern parts of southeast now with VFR conditions remaining further southward. And IFR is fairly widespread across the north slope. As you look at uh, Thursday afternoon, watch for IFR conditions across the north from St. Lawrence Island down to St. Matthew and west of Nunavak Island. And then VFR conditions still lingering across a widespread area of the Yukon Valley into the southwest region of Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and now more parts of southeast as you get into the afternoon on Thursday. Here's your pass conditions in detail. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass, we expect to see IFR conditions there as uh, low visibility should continue. Same goes for Lake Clark and Merrill Pass. Looking for a low deck to start the day. May see some improvements as the day goes on. Rainy Pass, we expect to see marginal conditions throughout the afternoon. Windy Pass looks to hold around IFR. Isabel Pass will lean that way during the daytime tomorrow. Mentasta Pass, we expect to see marginal conditions throughout most of the day. Tanita Pass, also expecting to see marginal conditions through most of your Wednesday. Portage Pass will slowly head that way, but a decent start it looks like for tomorrow with uh, VFR on both sides of the pass, and then Chilkoot and White Pass, as we saw, still looking pretty good for most of your Wednesday, as is most of Southeast. Changes will be seen, though, as we get into Thursday. For your freezing levels now across the Gulf, watch for a pretty steep gradient here across the central and eastern Gulf, the surface freezing line cutting over from Yakutat to about Sitka and then southward toward Ketchikan. Uh, and then eastward toward Hyder. Uh, you can see most of the warmth is here out to the west, so we don't have that giant packing of uh, uh, the elevated warming that we'd seen previously with the weather pattern as it continues to change and uh, temperatures across most of Alaska still well below freezing for tomorrow morning. As far as icing potential goes, generally levels are going to be above about four to 7,000 feet in the west. As this wave of weather spreads in from southwest to north and east, expect most of that uh, icing risk to be over the interior, so at least isolated moderate in some cases. And again, the worst of that will likely be across the region here in the interior. For the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, levels start to climb up to about six to 7,000 feet and higher with drier air moving in across the eastern and central bearing and then far out to the west. Uh, for southeast, the icing risk at this point remains minimal. The jet stream potential has a high pressure sitting right across the Gulf of Alaska. That's driving that stronger southerly flow up across the west coast and into uh, the interior, still protected by some of that ridge. That northwesterly flow coming down the west coast of the lower 48 states and over southeastern Alaska, keeping things pretty dry. Those wind speeds only running around 80 to 95 knots. Uh, the powerful part of the Pacific jet stream running about 80 to 150 knots right now from the west. At 9,000 feet, you can see our ridge over the Gulf. Southwesterlies are in force now for southwestern Alaska, 20 to 40 knots. Uh, the interior looking at about 20 to 30 there, and a little bit more of a south and easterly bend as you get up across the eastern Brooks Range there for Kaktovik, Prudhoe Bay, looking at about 20 to 30 knots at 9,000 feet. Again, for southeast, you're under the protection of that ridge, and you see that here at 3,000 feet as well. Northwesterly is coming in from about 10 to 20. More of a southerly flow developing west of Kodiak Island through the Kuskokwim Delta and then up toward Norton Sound. Uh, generally about 20 to 25 knots in the interior. And then here's our southeasterly hook again as you get up around the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. A uh, decent little low sitting south of the chain. That's driving in some much stronger winds and probably some turbulence today, which should be decreasing a little bit more tomorrow for the eastern and central chain. Those winds are around 50 to 60 knots. And we'll find that again tomorrow below 4,000 feet, so at least considerable 
moderate there for Adak and Atka eastward toward Nikolsky. Uh, Kodiak Island out toward uh, uh, Cold Bay, uh, you'll see some chop there. And then out across west and southwestern Alaska, uh, generally some considerable moderate. Uh, looks like a band of stronger chops starting to develop there north of the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And then across central and southern parts of southeast below 4,000 feet, be prepared for some considerable moderate. We'll be back with marine weather in just a few. Determination of true wind speed and direction is often difficult from a moving vessel. In this case, we're moving ahead at about 20 to 22 knots in this direction. The relative wind speed moving this way, as you can see by my hair and my shirt blowing like this. Whereas in actuality, the true wind is coming from this direction and moving this way at about maybe 8 to 10 knots, as can be seen by the surface small breaking waves. The most common and reliable way of estimating true wind speed and direction is by observing the wind's effect on the sea surface. These effects have been organized into a comparative scale called the Beaufort scale, recorded in knots. Ranging from calm, with the sea like a mirror, all the way up to hurricane force winds, the Beaufort scale associates sea conditions such as breaking waves, boiling sea, foam and spume with wind speed. A practiced observer will note such features as white caps for the formation of larger waves. The appearance of streaks and spray are important indicators of wind speed. Of course, wind waves always move in the direction the wind is blowing, so they indicate true wind direction. Your guide to sea state, wind, and clouds provides illustrations and descriptions of waves to help you apply the Beaufort scale. It's an approximate system, but can be quite accurate for an experienced observer. Once again, code your entry for wind direction. Wind speed is recorded directly in knots. Forecasters need to know present and past weather conditions, including cloud development. This is your appraisal of the conditions as you observed them during the past six hours. For example, conditions such as snow or fog or squalls, or other phenomena, such as lightning or funnel clouds, are coded as numbers as specified by the code card. The handbook gives the details on how to report the various kinds of weather phenomena and their subcategories. Clouds are a good predictor of changing weather. Proficiency in cloud identification is a combination of practice and study there's a gradual transition between the various types of clouds, which can make identification difficult. The most reliable observations of clouds are made by keeping as close and continuous a watch as possible on their development. The National Weather Service posters and guide can be a great help in this. Cloud heights will have to be estimated. Sometimes objects near the horizon can offer perspective. Estimate the height above the sea at the base of the lowest cloud seen. Also, estimate the fraction of the sky covered by clouds of all types. This is a general observation and not of specific kinds of clouds. Visibility is always an estimate. The experienced observer learns to gauge visibility based on the appearance of the horizon. But where there are aids to navigation and other ships, the most precise measure of visibility is with the use of radar. Two important parameters on the standard shipboard meteorological observation are waves and swell. Now, a swell is merely a wave that has outrun the wind. Now, off in this direction, we can see the swell moving in. It's characterized by that larger, smoother, movement coming toward the ship about from 30 degrees off the port bow here. Whereas the locally induced wind waves, which are usually of smaller period and a choppier appearance, are superimposed on top of that swell. Now they are locally induced by the wind. In this case, the wind is coming from this direction. And you can see the crests of the little small wavelets breaking coming in this direction. Characterizing waves and swell can sometimes be difficult. Waves generated by a local and often changeable wind can be irregular in size and shape. Wind shifts can produce confused seas. Look for higher, better formed wind waves. Remember, 
Wind waves are superimposed on the swell and can come from a different direction. Swell height is measured from trough to crest. Wind wave height is also measured from trough to crest, but not including the height of the swell. Wave period is the time between passing crests, measured in seconds. This and wave height, measured in half meters, are entered on the form. Swell comes from outside the local wind area and can come from more than one direction. The form asks for the direction, period, and height, as well as any secondary swell. Your wave and swell observations are important to forecasters. Ships and cargo are more easily damaged by large seas than by the wind. On a container ship, it's the cargo, the boxes. We can lose containers over the side, damaged by weather and sea, and heavily damaged, and you want, you want to avoid something like this. Satellite images can show the overall extent of sea ice, but because of cloud cover, Forecasters still require on-the-spot observations from ships or from shore to get a complete picture. If you cite ice flows when operating in high latitudes, consult the coding and descriptions contained in the observation handbook. More common is ice that accumulates on the ship. It occurs from ocean spray or combinations of spray, rain, and fog. Of course, all these phenomena are a function of air and sea temperature and dew point. Air temperature, sea temperature, and dew point are reported in Celsius, and it's critical that they be as accurate as possible. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time to take a look at today's sea ice edge, and you'll notice some changes across southwestern coastlines that are generally south of the Kuskokwim Delta. Uh, there's a lot of marginal ice there, but the overall ice edge is shifting northward thanks to that steady south and easterly flow. And there are some changes there off the Yukon Delta and around St. Lawrence Island as well. Still some wide areas of marginal ice off the coast of the Yukon Delta into Norton Sound and north and west of St. Lawrence Island. Uh, for the very latest sea ice analysis, you can always head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice and zoom into places like Cook Inlet to see how concentrations are moving around there as well. Here's a look at southeast now. As you'll notice, those northerlies are still in place. Gusts of 40 miles per uh, 40 knots in the Lynn Canal are expected through Wednesday with 5-foot seas there and 25 knots sustained. North and northwesterlies through the central and southern inner channel with a west and northwesterly flow through most of the outer coast. The higher seas are subsiding to the south while an easterly flow is starting up with the next wave of low pressure moving in. You'll see that uh, becoming a little more westerly with time across the outer coast as we get into Thursday. Southerlies flip around in the Loon Canal, 15 knots and 3-foot seas there, and south and easterly winds for the central and southern inner channels for Thursday with 3-foot seas expected there. For south central, look for light northeasterly winds coming down Cook Inlet past Calgan Island. Northwesterlies over the Barrens, 4-foot uh, seas expected there into the outer gulf. A west and southwesterly flow develops. 20 knots with 6 to 7 foot seas and light winds and small seas inside of Prince William Sound. We'll keep it that way for Thursday with a little bit more of a northerly push. West and northerly winds across the north and western Gulf and north winds light in the north parts of the Cook Inlet, but much stronger as you get uh, down past the Forelands. 20 knots with uh, up to 25 across the western Barrens and 5 foot seas there just outside of Cashamac Bay with a great reduction in the ice there in the bay just in the last 24 hours. As we look at the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay, southerlies there with 10-foot seas, 25-knot winds expected all the way down the Bering Sea coast, 20 knots across the Pacific coastline. Inside of Shelikov Strait, 25 knots with a 6-foot sea. Look for 7-foot seas east of Kodiak Island. Those will flip around to more of an easterly flow. As we get into Thursday, 15 to 20 knots with low pressure moving in across the southern Bering. Notice that south and easterly flow once again, uh, picking up for most of the peninsula with 6 to 9-foot seas there and 8 to 9-foot seas across the Pacific coastline, 20 knots there for the wind. For the central and eastern chain on Wednesday, a south and easterly winds expected 25 to 35 knots, looking for 15 to 17-foot seas across the region. Uh, northeasterly flows you get west of Adak and southwesterlies there for the western chain. 20-foot seas are expected for Wednesday. You'll see that diminish a little bit, but the wind picks up as we get into Thursday. 40 knots expected there as we get toward the end of the week. And notice the winds coming in from the west and southwest, all because 
of low pressure here across the central bearing. So we're getting that stronger drive in from the west and southwest as the winds are rounding that area of central pressure. South and westerly is up the west coast as we get into Wednesday. Light winds across Norton Sound at 15 knots. Southwesterly is over the Pribloffs, 20 knots from St. Lawrence to uh, the Etolan Strait region and Nunavak Island. Looking for 20 knots from the southeast for the Pribloffs, becoming 35 knots as we get into Thursday with an 18-foot sea there. South of the ice edge, you're going to see about 9 to 14-foot seas there. Uh, looking for winds about 25 to 35 knots over the ice from Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, north of Nunavak Island for your Thursday afternoon. Now watch this as we look at the Beaufort Seacoast, 25 to 30 knots expected there for Wednesday, east to west, and then southerly is coming up over the Chukchi Sea. Remember, blizzard warnings are in effect for St. Lawrence Island and part of the Bering Strait coast as we go through tonight and into early parts of tomorrow. As we get into Thursday, winds will start to diminish for parts of the Beaufort Sea coast and the Chukchi coast. Once you get into the Kotzebue Sound region and the Bering Strait communities, you're start, you'll start to see some more wind there, 20 to 30 knots, generally from the east and southeast as we go through your Thursday afternoon while winds remain fairly light up around the Beaufort. Let's recap your weather conditions across the region tonight. Many areas across the interior are under a winter weather advisory. You're expecting about four to seven inches of snow that will continue and probably pick up again tonight before it uh, finishes off tomorrow. Out across the west, a little more wind is expected across the Bering Strait communities to the St. Lawrence Island region. Bl blizzard warnings, in fact, are in effect there uh, through early tomorrow morning. Uh, the Kobuk and Noatak areas and then all the way down toward uh, areas north of Galena, you're expecting to see a winter storm warning for the Yukon and lower Yukon Valley regions. Expecting winter weather advisories, that's a generally lower amount of snow there. You may have some gusty winds with that as well. Uh, winter weather is winding down for the southern parts of southeast. You'll be in for a drier day tomorrow, some breaks in the clouds there uh, for areas like Ketchikan and Annette. Northward, the clouds should be back in for Juneau. Uh, Haines and Skagway. Out west, an another area of low pressures moving across the central chain. That'll bring another round of snow as we head into Thursday and Friday for the interior, but between the round now and uh, the end of the week, expect a little bit of sunshine. Have a good day. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.